Hi, hello. Uh, welcome to another session on visual effects and post-production. Today we are going to talk about cinematography. We are going to use many examples from video games and from uh, other media, including opening, endings, uh, uh, movies. Let's uh, think about cinematography, and obviously the word refers to cinema. And we think, uh, what is exactly the language of cinema? And why media like video games and cinema might have similar languages? Well, if you think about uh, cinema, uh, cinema, uh, it's not TV. It's not using your video to send a video to your colleagues through the mobile. Cinema implies the construction of a story using a particular language. And this is what we are going to talk about today, cinematography. It said um, this uh, filmmaker, the famous British filmmaker uh, Orson Welles, said that storytelling was writing with motion. Okay, What is this kind of poetry constructed with motion? Because... As we'll see, uh, motion, it is only an aspect of that. If you think in products that are adaptations, like, for example, this video game from a, a Blade Runner movie, or even in the sequel that was released a couple of years ago, you can think of how language is transformed. You know the story is similar. They are products that are telling a similar or parallel story. It's the same narrative world. Despite that, the language has evolved and the, the sometimes evolving as a question of the adopting of a different style because it is a different filmmaker, but also because it is a different medium. And however, if you think about uh, the modern cinematography, you will see that uh, there are many, many different, uh, many similarities with uh, video games. Video games is right now the big uh, business, is the main blockbusters are released as video games. And if you think about the language, it's not that different. I mean, uh, big uh, video games are going to, to be sold like epics, okay? Like this Titanfall, for example. Uh, it's not that different from the movie Transformers Age of Extinction. So what is exactly the difference between a regular image, something you can get with your camera, with the mobile camera, for example, and a professional product telling a story? Uh, you might think it's about pixels, it's about the sensor size, about the quality of image that you can offer. In some aspects, that is also a truth, but we are talking about language. We are talking about not about the the materials, but about the result, about the language, about the use of cinematography. And defining this is what uh, Brown did in uh, his book, talking about this concept of conceptual tools. The first one of these conceptual tools is the frame. Uh, when we talk about storyboards, uh, usually I uh, made so much emphasis on, or oh, you have to do the storyboard in a particular frame, in a particular size, particular uh, radio, aspect radio. And that is part of this, the frame. What is exactly uh, inside the story? Uh, what is uh, inside the frame? You Have you seen when the directors, they do these kind of things? Uh, oh, I'm going to frame you. I'm going to see. Well, this is, this is framing, okay? This is allocating objects inside the frame, okay? And this is a, w one of the most important uh, elements uh, in cinematography, okay? Defines particularly the style of many productions. If you think about a trailer like The Force Awakening here uh, on your right, you will see that it is a very well framing uh, um, design whatever we are talking about. Is it really communicating a story? Is it really, you know, a quality piece or whatever, that's another aspect. We are talking only about framing. Framing is important in anything you construct. 
imagine, for example, in video games, uh, the language uh, we use in video games is similar to cinematography because we consider the frame. For example, we allocate uh, the objects uh, following the rules of composition that are from photography and cinema. The second tool is the color. Okay, Think about uh, many of the movies in the 2000s and how they uh, basically corrected the colors and then uh, they follow a post-production process very similar to uh, manipulating a picture in Photoshop. Okay, right now this is a very important tool in cinematography, uh, color correction. And uh, color grading, it's a science itself. But the important th uh, thing here is that uh, we have to consider light and color as elements of conceptual design, communicating through color. This is a good example in 300, if you know this movie. This is adapted from a comic book, so the intention of the filmmaker was to capture that color, those tones, okay? Uh, the same ochres, the same reds, the same browns that you have in the comic book. Most of the video games and movies are following this kind of approach, trying to create a picture and saying, these are the conceptual colors, this is the tones, these are the tones, the, the colors, the uh, shadows, that we want to recreate. So we'll see in other uh, lessons in this module how to design levels or to design a scenes following these rules, rules of harmony, rules of contrast. Cinematography is also a work uh, based on principles of photography, as you can imagine. And one of the main principles is the use of lens. The use of lens, uh, it's uh, not anecdotal. Uh, Using different lens, we manipulate the space the objects uh, uh, takes in the frame. Okay, so you see this example is just fascinating how the same face can be uh, totally transformed depending on the use of a uh, different lens. Okay, so learning about the use of lens, whether you are using proper cameras, uh, actual cameras, or you use virtual cameras, it is a main element, a main tool in cinematography. We'll talk about this. I mean, uh, sometimes people think about lens as very uh, particular cases, like for example, a point of view or a particular uh, good effect or, uh, you know, uh, exaggeration of a, a, an idea that you want to transmit when adopting, uh, you know, uh, this kind of techniques like point of view. It's not only about that, uh, filming conversations or filming uh, general shots, there are decisions to take related to the use of a particular lens. To define movement is to define also uh, the absence of movement. When we define that an object is in movement, it's because all the objects are not in movement. So what is it if, uh, what are we moving when we are moving the, uh, the camera? We are moving everything. But the effect of moving the camera can be opposed or can be con, uh, con, can be different to the movement of objects within the camera. So all these different uh, elements of movement, relative or absolute, it's, are important. We need to differentiate them and we need to use them uh, in the right context. So... Right now in the virtual cinematography, as we are in this world of virtual cinematography, everything is movement. Trying to do uh, shots that are uh, very long, everlasting, or trying to uh, create a fake uh, one shots when actually we are uh, constructing everything, uh, you know, using different shots that are just fake as a single one, you know. Uh, these are uh, obviously features of the new cinematography nowadays. There are two important concepts uh, related to movement as well, and these are staging and blocking. Okay, so staging refers to the objects that are allocated in the scene, and how these are uh, helping us to frame the story and the action. Okay, so we allocate a scenario. 
this is related to our direction. Okay, so we'll see about this in our exercise about virtual cinematography using Unreal, and we'll see how uh, different uh, elements and spaces are already framing the action. Then it is the other element which has to do with the lights and the actors. I mean, actually, it has to do more with the actors, but because lights are always working in relation to the actors, it works also with lights. Blocking. What is the movement of the actions or actors are going to have and how these are going to be portrayed through the camera? This is the process of blocking. Another concept, the texture. Um, it is uh, something that we can work through, uh, through post-production or uh, uh, you know when we edit the movie or when we finish the movie. And that's basically texture is, is related to the colors, to the uh, uh, gradients, to the uh, treatment of uh, light in post-production. So it is about creating a mood, creating a feeling uh, consistent through the movie. And it's basically, if you think about this, it's kind of uh, creating the mayonnaise that, you know, makes the salad to be, uh, you know, homogeneous and, uh, you know, uh, feel like it's the same, uh, the same uh, dish, okay? The sauce, the ketchup, the mayonnaise, whatever you add to the food. It is not the food itself. It won't help to fix a bad food. It will just, you know, help to give a feeling and identity to the to the dish. It's just that. Think about the movies in the nineties. I mean, why they were so colored? But at that time, there was a technology that was uh, uh, right now at that moment very uh, popular and it was ready to color grading so they were experienced with that so they started to do the movies okay blue uh, green yellow and things like that right now we are not in that uh, uh, trend anymore might be still movies like that but uh, it's not that popular texture can help to convey a meaning like, for example, when you use black and white or you use sepia tones or whatever, obviously there are uh, clearly uh, ideas uh, communicated through that. And that's the power of post-production. Establishing is to allocate objects uh, as a main uh, significance within the scene. It is um, the way we communicate the audience, this is important. So we allocate the object when uh, the camera was uh, finishing a movement or at the beginning of the action, uh, we create a point of view and we stop. You know, so it is not only camera movement, it's also edition, it's also uh, titling, it's also framing. So it is a combination of different tools, okay? Establishing the meaning of uh, the most important objects within the scene. Point of view, uh, point of view. It's uh, obviously another uh, important conceptual tool. Uh, think about. Uh, I don't know if you know this movie, Hardcore Henry. It's just insane. It's a movie where uh, you are adopting all the time the point of view of the character, like kind of a video game, you know, a, a shooter. And obviously, this is a very nice idea for one minute. But imagine a 90 minutes of movie, it can be a little tiring. In any case, it's quite fun and it's quite original as an experiment. Point of view always exists, even when we are not adopting a particular point of view. In cinema, we cannot not adopt uh, a point of view. It is what we call zero focalization. We need to present a point of view. So it is like always there was someone in a room looking at someone else doing something. There is always a point of view. It's not like in uh, novels, for example, where you can tell a story without presenting a particular scene and a particular uh, point of view. Sound contributes to this point of view. It's important. What are we listening? Are we listening the same 
character listen? Are we listening everything, including the things that the character doesn't listen? Think, for example, about the music. There is a trans traditional uh, differentiation between dietic and no dietic uh, sound. Obviously, the, the um, soundtrack usually is not perceived by the actors in the scene, by the characters in the scene, uh, but uh, we perceive that as part of the audience. So what it means here is that uh, there are elements that are you know, part of the story and there are elements that are not part of the story. Introducing sound or a particular soundtrack, effects, all, ki all kinds of sound are part of the narration. And uh, they help us to communicate ideas, whether we are presenting a character or presenting an action or highlighting an special emotional tone within the narration. So it is quite important and we need to learn tools to design better sound. Now, let me talk a little about visual concepts. And when we are creating our products, like for example, these openings or endings or game, uh, game cutscenes, we need to communicate visual concepts powerful ideas. And this is uh, something that is uh, usually very well practiced uh, through advertising. Okay, uh, So uh, think about the, the posters, advertising posters like this one, the Burger King, okay? Flames, uh, trying to uh, uh, tell you that the food here is really authentic. It's done, you know, through, through the grill, through the flames. Okay, so that's just one idea, one idea that, you know, moves through the uh, poster to the script, to the concept art, to the final production. So that is what you have to do when you create your products. In games, you have also as well, all kinds of concepts, okay? Sometimes an image of the game is powerful enough to sell the game even before it's released. And maybe sometimes creates ideas about a, a game expectations that are never satisfied. But well, the business is, is like that. No? We have to create uh, images. And when we create our openings or our endings for our uh, products, we need to think, uh, to think as well about this, about how we sell this before the product starts. So conceptualizing uh, through the use of examples or through your own concept art. It's part of the work we are going to do in this module. So I would recommend to practice your drawing skills. Don't worry so much about being a good uh, drawer. It's more important to be able to communicate effectively. So it is something that you have to practice. And it won't be easy. You need to practice a lot in order to create more effective pieces. As a summary, cinematography uh, is based on a few complex principles. Visual concepts are part of these uh, uh, principles as well. Uh, but in the case of visual concepts, it's something that can be communicated through different media. While in cinematography or these conceptual tools we have defined, we are referring exclusively on cinema language. As always, uh, check your slides and the different materials in order to get the most of this lesson. Remember that you have uh, 20 credits and these are consisting of different activities and different time slots that you should uh, try to, to use. Directed work uh, is usually um, form of further reading or a critical commentary of examples like the discussions we are going to do this year and also complementary exercise. The references, if you want to know more about cinematography. And that's all for today. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and uh, see you around.